it's the old Ogilvy's place. You're walking to me like that. Is something the matter, sir? Is he drunk? Are you feeling badly, sir? No, I'm... I'm all right now. That... that's blood! We were beginning to wonder what had happened to you. You didn't come home last night, did you? Oh, no. I stayed with some friends. We found the door open, so we came in. How did you get that cut? Oh, I bumped into a man carrying some baskets a little while ago. Well, I'll get something to clean it for you. You sure you're all right? Oh, yes, of course. Oh. Barbara's just been playing me the opening of your new concerto. It's the best work you've ever done. I've always felt you were very gifted. And I've been waiting for you to do something like this. As you know, early in December, I have a series of, well, uh, musical soirees in my house. Now, I'd like to include a new and modern work. So, if you can finish this in time, hmm? Naturally, you'll be at the piano. Well. And you'd be conducting, Sir Henry? Yes. I'm enormously complimented. Of course, everything depends on how you complete it. You're already established as a musician, and if this concerto is successful, it can mean international recognition of all your work. I'd like to help bring that about. Thank you, sir. Well, I think that's really all I have to say. Put everything else aside, my dear boy. Finish it. Oh, I'm so pleased. <laughs> so am I. Good heavens, I should be late for the Philharmonic. Uh, I think I've just time to see you home. Well, perhaps George will if you're late. Why, of course. Oh, thank you. <laughs> goodbye, Father. Goodbye. Oh, goodbye, sir. Thank you. You've been exceedingly kind. Not at all. I don't know how I shall ever thank you. There's no need. Barbara, I didn't stay with friends last night. You mean that it's happened again? I don't know where I've been or what I've done. I remember having gone out last evening. And then nothing more until I found myself a little while ago over in Fulham. There's a whole day missing. Did you do anything this time? Not that I can recall. Where could I have got this? I'll throw it away. No. I'll keep it. Being all about the full of murder. A man's death 
Are you shouting something about Fulham? Paper boy. Yes, sir. Here you are, sir. Thank you, sir. Here are paper full of murder. Man stabbed to death in Fulham. Are you all about the Fulham murder? Fulham. Isn't that where you were? Could I have done this? Oh, no. Barbara. Something's happened lately. These moods are getting deeper and longer. I mean, 24 hours. Barbara, I'm going to Scotland Yard. To the police? No. I knew of someone there, a Dr. Middleton. My own doctor suggested him. He's very brilliant with new ideas about the mind. I think he may be able to help me. I've got to go to see him now. If you go, I'll go with you. No. Please, George. I want to. All my life, I've had blank little moods. But just for a minute or two, I've never known anything like the one I've just had. Um. Certainly nothing that's lasted a whole day. Have you been working very hard? Oh, he works day and night. You see, he's writing a concerto, and I'm sure he wouldn't eat sometimes if our housekeeper didn't send meals across to him. Well, what I really want to know is, would I be likely to do anything criminal during one of these moods? What makes you ask that? This man was stabbed. And when I came to myself, I found this in my pocket. And there was blood on my coat. The blood came from the cut on his head, didn't it? What do you think sends you into these moods? When I'm tense or, or worked up, then any discordant sound seems to do it. I never remember anything afterwards, except that I have an odd sensation like the memory of an ache here. He couldn't have done anything criminal, could we'll he? We'll determine that very quickly. I want a specimen of your blood, if you don't mind. I'll make some preliminary tests here, and then I'll go out to the antique shop and make a further examination. Well, shall I wait here? Oh, no, you can go home, Mr. Bone. I live quite close to you, and if everything's all right, I'll call later and set your mind at rest. Well, that would be very kind of you. We shall know all about it in a couple of hours. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Dr. Middleton. Bye. Lieutenant Clay, can you spare a moment? If you have a couple of plain clothes men available, I've just had someone here I think should be followed in connection with that Fulham case. I don't think I can wait any longer. Well, I'll see you home. Perhaps Dr. Middleton will come in the morning. I wonder what delayed him. Sometimes these things take longer than one expects. I'm sure everything's all right. Oh, come in, doctor. Well, here's your coat, Mr. Bone. You can clean the blood off because it's entirely your own. And here's your dagger. I subjected it to every test known to Scotland Yard. I examined it chemically for blood stains and microscopically for fibers. What did you find? I found no fibers that matched the dead man's clothing and no trace of his or anybody else's blood. Then George had absolutely nothing to do with the murder. Oh, well, I didn't say that, but uh, I can tell you this, that if Mr. Bone had done it, uh, we wouldn't be able to prove it. 
As a matter of fact, the antique dealer was a well-known crook and dealer in stolen goods. The official Scotland Yard opinion is that one of his accomplices did him in and then set fire to the house to conceal his crime. I was afraid I'd done it. I had a couple of plainclothes men following you, just in case. I sent them back to the yard. I've been thinking about these uh, moods of yours, Mr. Bone. The mind is a delicate mechanism. Now, if a man lives completely within himself, if he upsets the normal balance between work and play, the mind may rebel. Without conscious knowledge or volition, it may cause him to do strange things, or even dangerous things. Now, well, that's what I think is happening to you. But there must be something one can do. Yes, there is. I suggest that you get away from your music as often as you can. Find some new emotional outlet. Go out among ordinary, everyday people. See how they live. Learn how they work, and above all, learn how they play. But Dr. Middleton, music is the most important thing in the world to me. No, Mr. Bone, the most important thing is your life. Now, follow my advice. I'll see that he does, Doctor. And, and she will. Well, good night, Mr. Bone. Good night, Doctor, and thank you very much. Well, George, I really should be going. Uh, perhaps I can see you home. Thank you, but I live just across the square. It's only a few steps. I can make a few steps go an awfully long way. It's dreadful this should happen to George. He's such a wonderful person. But he's so helpless. He really does have a very great talent. And he's helped me enormously to improve my piano technique. Indeed. You know, George has been so depressed about his lapses. Are they really dangerous? Uh, they could be. When he goes into one of his moods, his subconscious mind has control. Now, there's nothing especially dangerous about that. But if his condition at the time is aggravated by excessive concentration, you'll have an urge to destroy anything that stands in his way. So you see how important it is for him to follow my advice. Yes. I'm sure you've done a lot for him. Well, 
in front of that audience? No, no, no. Have you seen Joe? I'll get somewhere with that, won't I? Now, listen, they're a very difficult audience, and you held them every minute. They know what they like, and they liked you. Well, I didn't like them. All the same, you were very good. I thought you were wonderful. Oh, this is George Fone, Nat along. How do you do? Nat has just moved into the square. He writes music. Songs? No, I'm afraid not. Oh, no, symphonies, classic stuff. How about another drink, Mick? Right you are. When I heard you singing in there, I got an idea for a sort of tune. May I play it for you? Listen, that's good. Is he important? Well, he's a well-known composer. He's quite important. Mm-hmm. If you had some words, you could sing that. Uh-huh. Say, Nat, I've got a lyric that would fit that. Do you remember? What? All for you. All for you. I've changed my way of living. My way of loving. That suits my voice exactly. I brought you a drink, George. Oh, thank you. Oh, uh, you wouldn't care to, to work that up into a song for me, would you? Well, I could try. Oh, I'd be awfully grateful, Mr. Bone. <laughs> oh, no. oh, oh, George, you all right? Huh? I'm afraid... <laughs> afraid I'm a bit squiffed. <laughs> all right. You're all right, old boy. You wrote a darn good song. Oh, oh, oh Mickey, come on. <laughs> well, this is where I live. Oh, that woman has turned out my cat again. Oh, you poor kitty out in the cold. The landlady won't let me keep her in the apartment. What am I going to do? Give her to me. No, no, I look after her. And then you can come round any time you wish to see her. Oh, that's awful nice Let of you, George. Oh, what a head I'm going to have tomorrow. I shall call for you in the morning, and we'll walk round the square together. You don't know, Natta, you're a newcomer here, but three times round the square, and a drink at the pub. Oh, that's the local recipe for hangover. Oh, good night, Natta. Good night. Good night, old boy. Good so night. glad to have met you. Good night, Becky. Good night, George. Good night, baby. I sold it. Netta, I sold it. Sold what? The song, the one George wrote in the pub, all for you. Oh, wonderful. Maya's going to publish it. I got a check for the advance royalties. They're sending George his direct. But I cashed ours. How much? Fifty guineas. Half for you and half for me. Fifty guineas? Well, that made him worth playing up to, didn't it? Well, thank heavens I shan't have to do that anymore. What do you mean? Oh, George bores me sick. Well, it's not just because of this one song. We've struck a gold mine. You can get other songs out of him. Oh, I, I see what you mean. You stick to him and his music, and then you really will get somewhere. This is just the beginning. <laughs> You're right, Mickey. You're very right. Come on, let's celebrate. I want you to come and meet a friend of mine, Eddie Carstairs. Oh, oh, I'm sorry I can't. George is taking me to Perrier's. Oh, ho. Well, where did he take you last night? Romano's. And Frascati's the night before? Well, I don't see what you've got to complain of. Well, I nearly always have to sit through one of those dreadful symphonies afterwards. Well, it's worth it. Romano's and Frascati's and now Perrier's. <sighs> Our little Netta is coming up in the world. <laughs> Our little Netta has not even started yet. Mickey, come and hook me up, will you, dear? And, uh, and then, darling, I think you'd better go, because he's coming over to fetch me as soon as he's ready. <laughs>
Are you hungry? Hmm? Come in. George, would you like to come with us to the Philharmonic? Why, oh, you're all dressed. Our father's waiting with a carriage if you'd like to come. I'm sorry. I have another engagement. Oh. I see. Well, good night. Good night. Are you with me or with somebody else? What? All evening you seem to have been watching for someone. Oh, no, I was just seeing who's here. Coffee, sir? Yes, thank you. Oh, well, uh, let's have coffee in the lounge, shall we? Care, sir? Uh, Benedictine for me. Two Benedictines, please. There you go again. Netta, for whom is it you're looking at? No one, George. I've told you that. Then stop staring around and pay some attention to me. <laughs> hello, George. Hello, Mickey. Oh, hello. How are well, you? You know Netta Longdon, don't you? Good evening. Uh, won't you sit down and have a drink with us? Oh, George, this is Mr. Carstairs, the junior member of Carstairs and Carstairs, the famous theatrical producers. How do you do? Uh, this is George Bone. How do you do? Please sit down. Thank you. Uh, George Harvey Bone, the composer. He wrote that song that I wanted to sing for you. Oh, yes, George Bone. I heard your springtime sonata, a very fine piece of music. You write popular things, too? Well, I've put music to some of Mickey's lyrics. Oh, oh Mr. Carstairs. I do wish you could hear some of George's songs. I'd be glad to sometime. Oh, he has the most marvelous new one. Please let me sing it for you tonight. I'm very sorry, but Mickey and I have to die and then go on to Ruffini's. Come to the office tomorrow. I hope you'll come too, sir. Thank you. Good night, Mr. Bone. Good night, Good Mr. Good night. Carstairs. This way, Mr. Carstairs. Good night, Mickey. Good night, Mickey. Let's go, shall we? Where to, a show? No, I'm afraid it's a little late for that. Oh, I have an idea. Why don't you come to hear a symphony with me at the Philharmonic? We just catch it. I'll telephone to the house manager. I'm sure he'd save seats for us. All right, George. That'll be lovely. Go on. Good. I'll be right back. Oh, uh, you said you were going to Ruffini's, didn't you? Yes, that's right. Well, they have guest singers there, don't they? Right. I'm sure they'd let me sing if you'd ask them. I'm afraid that even the guest singers rehearse with the orchestra first. Well, she only needs a pianist and I can play for her. Right you are, Mickey. It wouldn't do you justice, my dear. Oh, I'll chance that. Oh, please let me meet you there, just in case there is a chance. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Then I'll go home and change, and I'll meet you at Ruffini's about, about midnight. I can't stop you from doing that, of course. <laughs> Oh, I, I hope I'm not being a nuisance. You are. But I rather like it. <laughs> I'll, uh, see you there, then. Mm. Goodbye. Oh, ring off, sir. Ring off. What? Turn the handle like this, sir. Three times. That's called ringing off, sir. Thank you very much. Oh, it's all right. I've got the tickets. Oh, George, I, I've got the most dreadful headache. You mean you don't want to come with me? Oh, I do, darling. I want to terribly, but I am so tired, and my head is... is... W would you mind terribly taking me home? Of course not, Nita. Thank you, George. Cab, sir? Yes, thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. George, you're cross with me. No, I'm not. But you are. 
I can tell by the tone of your voice. Don't be so far away. If I've upset you, I'm sorry. It's all right, Nada. George, make me comfortable. George. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that other lyric of Mickey's? The one you're working on? You mean so close to paradise? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Why? Oh. This just made me think of it. So close to paradise. We could reach out and gather a star so close. Oh, it's lovely, George. It's lovely when you say it. When will you finish it? Mm -mm. Soon. Maybe tomorrow. Could you finish it tonight while I'm resting? Oh, I guess I could. Well, then you could. Bring it over after a while. But I think it'd be awfully late, Netta. It wouldn't matter how late, George. Time, George. I've just finished it. You said to bring it over. May I come in and play it to you? Well, it's it's awfully late, George. But you said it didn't matter how late. Well, darling, I, I've just been asleep. I'll just look at but it. But I'm I've worked awfully hard to finish it. I really would like to play it over for you. Really, George, I, I have got such a head. Oh. I've no idea. Oh, I'm sorry. Is there anything I can get for you? No, I, I just want to be quiet. Thanks for coming over. I'll, I'll see you in the morning, darling. Good night. Good night, Nita. Send for a cab, will you? Thank you. Blimey, but it's hot. I'm watching out for a load of gas pipe. They delivered it to the wrong hole. You know, they've got to fetch out the gas pipe here sometime tonight, or the men won't be able to start working in the morning. Netta. 
I thought you weren't well. Where are you going? To Ruffini's. They need a guest singer. But you said you had a headache. But I can't miss this opportunity. Costa sent me a message not ten minutes ago. You couldn't have dressed like this in ten minutes. You must have been practically ready when I spoke to you just now. Sometimes you can be an awful bore. I'm going with you. No. There's George. No. Come later, if you like. When you're in a better temper, darling. Drive on. George. George. Aren't you rather letting yourself down? If I am, isn't that my own affair? Not entirely. Because you're letting me down, too. I wish you'd stop badgering me about that concerto. And I wish you'd realize what's happening to Have you. Have you considered that I may prefer what I'm doing? To waste your talent on someone with no real ability, and even less reputation? You'll kill your inspiration, and you'll be left flat, exactly as you were left just now. Good night, George. Broke a wheel. Are you all right, sir? over at Serena Ridge. Ain't you feeling well, sir? Can you hurt yourself, sir? Oh, no. Everything seems to be falling into your ditch tonight. First those pipes, and now me. I wonder what's happened over at Serena Ridge. What'd you say? The police just drove up. Police? There's a whole van load. Well, that's odd. I didn't see them pass. May I see? Oh, don't. Don't, please. <laughs> I'm sorry. There's a deep bruise in her throat. She says he threw something round her neck. It was probably a cord with a knot in it. That's what caused the bruise. It acted like a thuggy cord. Thuggy? What's that? It's a method of very swift and silent murder. But what could 
East Indians use it. We've had cases down at the docks. One of them could have been prowling around here. Yes, he could have been thieving. And he tried to quiet the girl. Williams. Yes, sir. What's all this excitement about? It's Miss Barbara, sir. Well, what's happened? Somebody tried to strangle her, sir. What? We'd better let the others know the kind of man they're looking for. I'll be back in a moment. This is dreadful, Barbara. Were you here all alone? I was playing. Because I felt so unhappy about the things I'd said to you. I deserved them. I've broken my promise to you about the concerto. I'm sorry. Will you keep your promise and finish it? Yes, I will. Thank you. I knew you would. you were playing? Something from my concerto. Oh. So that's why I haven't seen you these past few days. Precisely. By the way, darling, how's my song coming? It isn't. You haven't worked on it? Not for days. I haven't even looked at it. I can't write songs for you when I'm supposed to. Well, that's only because I haven't been here to help you. No. Because I want to get on with my concerto. Darling, couldn't you put that aside just for a little while, for me? I've already put my own work aside far too long for you. Oh, but it's, it's just one more song. It's always one more. They get stale so fast, I never have time to do anything else. I won't do it. But, but I must have it, dear. I, I open next week. Well, then get somebody else to write it. I'm not the only composer in London. I don't want anyone else to write it. It's no use, Netta. Why don't you go away and leave me alone? But, George, you... You can't let me down now. Please. This goes on and on. These songs mean nothing to me. What do I get out of them? You could get me. All for you. There's not a thing I wouldn't... or that I couldn't do. You wrote that for me, George. But you've never really tried to find out, have you? What you were playing when I came in, dear? Like this? No. It's not quite right. It's like this. Yes, that's lovely, George. But look, why don't you do it like this? Try it once. Letter, it isn't a waltz. 
That's not the right tempo. Now, well, listen. darling, it would be for my song. But you can't have it. It belongs to the concerto. Oh, George, it's such a little thing. Your concerto would never miss it. But darling, never. Darling, you must have been thinking of me when you wrote no, that. No, I wasn't. But you must have been, darling, because that is me. Well, can't you hear that? That's my song. Listen, uh, play it once. Waltz tempo. Come on, play it. La, 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 la. When to, um, when to lips. Breathe the flame. La da dum da 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 dum 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 da 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 dum. This is our moment for gay love. It is mine, isn't it? For the Guy Fawkes bonfire. Money to burn a guy. Please to remember the 5th of November. Come out of treason and plot. I see no reason. Remember the guy, sir. 5th of November, sir. Remember the 5th. Oh, I'd forgotten it was Guy Fawkes. It comes eh? every year, sir. And what did Guy Fawkes he do? He tried to blow up the Houses of Parliament. So every year we burn a guy of him. We made this, this one. This one's going to be on the big bonfire in Cheney Yard. Well, here you are, Crikey, boys. Crikey, a shilling. Hi, Governor. You're a tough. A whole shilling. He's a bit of all Let's right. Let's hurry and spend it before all the fireworks are gone. Oh, good evening, Ben. Monsieur Boone. Is Miss Longdon home now? Yes, Mademoiselle is home, but uh, she's dressing. How we tell her that you are oh, here, Monsieur? Oh, don't bother, Yvette. Mademoiselle! Mademoiselle, Monsieur Boone is here! Oh, hello, George. Did you want something? I wanted to talk to you, neighbor. It's the third time I've been here today. Oh, really? Why, Yvette didn't tell me. I've uh, just been resting. Well, I realize you've had a very exhausting week, Netta. That's why I waited until now to ask you. Oh, oh no, not now, George. Please, darling, it's, it's so late, and, and I have to dress yet for the theater. But I can talk to you while you're dressing. I can still hear you singing. All for you. There's not a thing I wouldn't or that I couldn't do. Do you remember that? Yes, George, but I, I really can't talk to you about that now. I've waited for such a long time to say this. Please, marry me, Netta. I'll work the rest of my life just for you. There's nothing that I won't do. I'll forget about everything else. I'm afraid you're a little late, old boy. You see, Netta's marrying me next week. That's not true. Netta. It's not true, is it? Well, why haven't you told me about it before? I tried to, George. My dear Shuffle, I don't altogether see how it concerns you. And this has been going on all the time, I suppose. Now, look here, my dear Vaughan. And it's it, going to be all right in a day or two. But at the piano, she said... No, <laughs> my dear fellow, don't she get kissed upset. Me. She whispered to me, she promised, you could have me, she said. And all the while, you got her. Oh, George! George! Taking a funny, conniving again! George! George, stop! Are you, are you crazy? George, slow let him go! Oh, you're killing him! Stop it, George! George, stop it, you fool!
evening, sir. I hope you're feeling well this evening, sir. Someone killed a cat. I'm afraid I got a bit of bad news for you, sir. Have a look here. It's your cat, sir. Some boys brought it along. Would it be worth half a crown to you, sir, if I buried the cat in that there hole? Thank you kindly, sir. Crikey, but they got the diggings of a big bonfire over in Cheney Yard.
All right, kitty, now I'm done. Here, kitty, 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 kitty. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Come on, kitty. Here, kitty, 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 kitty. Come on. Come on, kitty. Come on, kitty, 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 kitty. Where are you, kitty? Come on, kitty, kitty, kitty. Uh, we shan't be long. We uh, just dropped in again, sir. Hmm? Yeah. Oh, I, uh, I'll read this through in here. Is there anything new? Nothing new at all, sir, really. You know, this is about the most baffling case I've ever worked on. Women like her don't just vanish and leave diamond necklaces on the floor. Well, she was murdered, of course. There's no doubt of that. Mr. Carstairs told us you'd been over there quarreling. But I told you that myself, days ago. Another thing, Mr. Bone, we're informed that you never know what you do in these periods of forgetfulness of yours. Is it possible that you could have had one that evening? No. Now, how do you know you didn't? Because I can account for all my time. After that quarrel, I came directly back here, and I know exactly what I did. I tried to work, but at first I couldn't. Then I tore up some music sheets and threw them into the wastebasket. That made the cat jump away. She knocked over some violins. I picked them up, and when I looked for the cat, she had got out. She was run over. Well, later, you tipped the watchman to bury the cat. So you were not down here all the time, sir? And he said you looked a bit funny. That's what made us wonder if you could have forgotten what happened. And Miss Netta Longden being missing doesn't seem to have worried you a very great deal after you'd asked her to marry you. After I'd found out about her and Carstairs, I tried to forget her. If I'd had anything to do with what's happened, I'd admit it. Now, I've answered all your questions. I've never objected to your bursting in here at any time at all as you've done just now. So if there's anything else you want to know, please ask me. And then be good enough to let me continue with my own affairs. I'm sorry, Sir Henry. This is beautifully inspired, my dear boy. Thank you. Uh, we'll be getting along, Mr. Bone. We can have our first rehearsal on Friday. How about 10 o'clock suit you? Well, we've been barking up the wrong tree. We've got to try another angle. You're satisfied about him, then? We were prepared to arrest him just now, only we haven't any real evidence against him. He doesn't act like a guilty man. He got quite indignant with us in the end. Carstairs was the last to see her alive, as far as we know. I think we should pay him another visit. Are you coming with us? No, I think I'll look around. You're still suspicious of our friend down there, aren't you? I want to see if I can find out what happened to the body.
George, what are you doing out here? I thought I saw you from the house. Shouldn't you be getting ready? Well, I've been for a walk. And I thought you were resting. Are you worried about the performance? Oh, no. Oh, good night. I've been thinking about Netta. I can't get her out of my mind. I have impressions of her, but they're distorted, like memories all clouded over. It's frightening. But this is no time to think about all that. I can't be completely sure until I've found out what's happened. I wonder if I could have had something to do with it. You thought you had something to do with that antique dealer in Fulham, but you didn't. Put your mind on the concerto now. All right. Oh, I got you this. So you could wear these tonight. Camellias. They're beautiful, aren't they? Oh. I want you to know, Barbara, that I'm deeply grateful for all your kindnesses. Thank you. And when I'm playing tonight, I'll look at you whenever I can. And I'll smile at you. See you in a little while. Good evening. I hope you don't mind my walking in and waiting for you. Not at all. Except that I have to change. Oh, I shan't be in your way. Oh, if you'd like a drink. No, thank you. You think I killed Natty, don't you? I think it's possible. You'd like to get to the bottom of it, wouldn't you? Naturally, I would. Between us, I think we can find out what happened. I took the liberty of looking around while I was waiting. You um, found a use for this, I see. Oh, yes. I've always wanted something for working through the sound holes of violins, and that seems to be exactly right. And that's why you picked it up. And I also found this um, newspaper article. Methods of Murder by the well-known Home Office analyst Alan Middleton. I wonder if you kept that because I wrote it or because uh, of this picture of the buggy cord. I describe where the knots are placed and how it's used. I wonder if that sank into your mind. Uh, Barbara was uh, attacked with a cord like that. Did you ever make a thuggy cord? Did you? Did you? This has wrinkles in it, made by knots, like the knots in a thuggy cord. And I noticed a pair of trousers. The cloth was singed. Oh, but I don't know how that happened. Could it have happened in Cheney Yard, where they had the big bonfire on the night that Netta disappeared? I wasn't there. No, but I have been there, asking about what time they lit the fire. It was just about the time that Mickey rang Netta's doorbell and found that she disappeared. The fire was blazing when you tipped the night watchman to bed of the cat. But I don't remember anything about it. In the Fulham murder, someone used fire to try to conceal the crime. But you said that I was definitely cleared of that. No. I was referring to the fire. I thought that perhaps that might also have sunk into your mind. In Cheney Yard, they remember a man on a high ladder. He carried a guy all the way up to the top of the bonfire and got singed coming down. That was you, and it wasn't a guy you were carrying, it was Netta killed with this during one of your lapses. You're quite wrong. I'm not wrong. You have vague memories of everything I've said, haven't you? I'm sorry, I must finish dressing. You'd better come with me. But I can't. I've got to play my concerto. Yes, not now. I have to play, they're waiting. Listen, my friend, you're out of balance. I realize that. But I know precisely what I'm doing. But the shock of all this and the strain of playing may prove too much for you. I warned you that your mind might break down and cause you to do some terrible, uncontrolled thing. You can't be blamed, my dear fellow, but you're dangerous. You'd better come along with me. To Scotland Yard? Yes.
to be put away? Well, we'll see. But I've already told you they're waiting for me. I have to play. I'm sorry, but I can't let you go. But I've worked all my life for this one night. I'm sorry, but you must come with me. Very well. George is very late. Well, Dr. Middleton hasn't arrived either. Ladies and gentlemen, our composer, George Harvey Bowen. I'm glad you're here, George. We were afraid you'd be late. What delayed you? I'm sorry.
out of here. The whole house Wait. is free. George. Where's Barbara? Listen.